we get stuck in this cycle and we start to create and we start to receive and things start to explode and you're manifesting all these things. But what happens when you wake up one day and you're like, but this is not even what I want right now. Hey there, this is Patrice Washington from patricewashington.com where we chase purpose, not money. Welcome back to all of our OG listeners and purpose chasers from all over the globe and a big hello to our new listeners. Here's what you need to know. This is a community that believes that wealth is so much more than just money and material possessions. We believe in the original 12th century definition of wealth, which says it's about the condition of well-being. So each and every week, we seek to unpack what I call the six pillars of wealth and learn about all the other areas of life that impact our finances, whether we know it or not. If you need to catch up, head to patricewashington.com forward slash start here and learn more about the pillars. That's patricewashington.com forward slash start here. Now, before I jump in to today's episode, I have to tell you that this one was brought to you by... Me. (laughs) Actually, it's brought to you by Purpose to Platform. We are now enrolling. So if you're starting to think about what's next for you when you leave your possibly high paying, but maybe unfulfilling job and have no clue of where to start to build a strong foundation, my business accelerator and mentorship program, Purpose to Platform, may be just what you need. This online adventure will get you clear on how to package your purpose, communicate your promise to your ideal audience, choose the best platform for your personality and lifestyle, and create a premium offer. You'll have accountability and support in a dynamic community so you can finally make progress and be ready before you even need to pull that trigger on what may no longer be serving you. And let's see if we're a fit. Purpose2platform.com. That's Purpose, the number two, platform.com. What if you woke up and realized that you had been striving for weeks, months, years, decades to create a life you didn't even want? What would you do? How would you feel? So many people spend time striving, forcing, kicking down doors to homes they didn't even want, climbing ladders up the wrong wall for things that mean nothing to them. And I think that we're at such a great place. This last year hopefully has taught us so much more about what really matters And not what really matters to society, but hopefully what really matters to self. You've experienced so much this year where you've actually survived and thrived without a lot of the things you once thought you needed to be happy. And what if you allowed yourself to stay in that place and to really, really finally give yourself permission to redefine wealth redefine success, and redefine happiness for yourself. I literally stopped in the middle of getting dressed this morning and was flooded with all of these thoughts. So I know that this is when it's divine download time. And so I instantly pulled out my recorder and just start going because this is a conversation that I know we need. And as we look to a brand new year, many of us thought, oh, 2020 is going to be my year. And I think for many of us, it still was, despite all that was happening. I've spoken to many people who are like, Patrice, I'd hate to say it, but this was the best year of my life, right? And then obviously we know people where that is not the case at all. But wherever you are on the spectrum, Here's what I want to invite you to do. I want to invite you to not just look towards 2021 as if all of a sudden when that clock strikes midnight on January 1st, 2021, things are going to be different for you. Nothing will be different until you redefine what you really want. You will continue 
to go to that place that no longer serves you. Well, you will continue to stay in that relationship that depletes you. You will continue to not set boundaries with those activities, people, the things that actually require some boundaries in your life. You will continue to strive to hit goals in an office setting, in a bank account that you don't even want. They don't even matter to you. And I want to invite you to think about what do you really value? What do you really value? Because I know for Gerald and I, you guys know our story. And if you never heard the episode Blessing of Downsizing, part one and part two, I really suggest you go back and find it. We'll try to link to it in the show notes. When we lost everything, we thought that what we wanted was to get it all back, right? You hear the church songs, they're like, you know, I'm getting it all back. (laughs) I don't want to start singing. That's not what you want. Passionate, but it ain't my purpose, right? But there's like a church song, gospel song, it talks about wanting it all back. And so we kind of moved through this mantra, been there, done that on the way back. And that was helpful mentally. That was helpful for keeping us focused on you know, moving forward and understanding that the circumstances we were in were temporal. They were not permanent. They were not there to stay. And so that was helpful. The thing is, it was helpful in 2009 when we first lost everything. Follow me. It was helpful in 2009 when we first lost everything because it kept us focused on getting back up. It was a part of that resilience plan, right? Been there, done that on the way back. Start shifting your mindset. Adapt these mantras. Have certain affirmations that are going to move you forward. The thing is, when we don't reevaluate what we're saying, we get stuck in this cycle and we start to create and we start to receive and things start to explode and you're manifesting all these things. But what happens when you wake up one day and you're like, but this is not even what I want right now? What happens when you realize This is not even what I want right now. This made sense five years ago. It made sense to me seven years ago. But have I stopped to explore whether this makes sense for me today in this present moment? And I can say for us that we didn't. We were going, going, going. We were building our careers We were having all this success left and right. And so we made an assumption that now that the money is restored, that we must still want to go back and have all the luxury cars and get the big, huge house again and have this time all these, you know, team members, staff members, not for just business, but in our home. Because not only have we not redefined what success would look like for us, we were also gleaning from other people's definitions who were around us. We were gleaning from other people's definitions, meaning seeing other people who had all the things, we fell into that trap of, well, we must require all the things. And the truth was that wasn't, what we even cared about. It looked good on the surface. It looked nice, right? It it looked like a wonderful life. And I'm not complaining. I'm not negating, you know, the the many amazing experiences and, and things we were able to do. But when it really came down to it, when we finally had this conversation on one of our <laughs> up in the middle of the night randomly talking and we start talking about what actually mattered to us, we realized that while we had this 6,700, I believe, 67 or 6,300 square foot house, whatever it was, we were like, well, babe, we only really hang out in the den, in the kitchen. Like all of us, (laughs) we only hang out in the den and in the kitchen. Of course, I worked from my home office My daughter slept in her room. We slept in our bedroom, but we had a whole lot of other rooms. 
and we had a backyard like a freaking football field. And maybe we had two or three gatherings per year. And we were like, we have all this space and all these things, and we don't even really care about it. What we care about are experiences that what has meant the most to us over that period of time were the travel, going to the Philippines, going to Hong Kong, uh, going to South Africa, stopping in Dubai, taking the family to the Bahamas. We love the experiences. To this day, we crack up about just different inside jokes that happened in each one of those places. And we're like, what if we just focused on creating more experiences because that's what we truly love and not put so much of our our income towards having to pay for a home and not just pay, you know, mortgage or rent, the utilities that go along with this place and the staff that goes along with helping just manage some of this stuff. Like the housekeeper had an, a person who would come and help her <laughs> like just to get through it every every few days. They would both be there. It was like, why do we, we don't need that. We're living in somebody else's definition. And so we made a decision in 2018 that we would downsize. And that episode is so good. The blessing of downsizing again, we'll link in the show notes, but, and then we downsized into an apartment, which was like a little less than 2000 square feet or right around there. We only kept the things we absolutely loved. I decorated my butt off, you know, in the next life, I think I want to be some type of interior designer, but it has to be for very small spaces because I don't have the capacity (laughs) for anything big. (laughs) But I put everything together really well. We did our year there. We allowed our daughter to finish sixth grade there. That was her request. And then in 2019, we moved back to Georgia. And we talk about that whole experience as well and teaching our daughter, but it has taught us so much about what we truly value. And I just really feel it on my heart because we're we're still refining, defining, redefining all the time, making sure that we check in our, with ourselves about, is this what we want? And so for us, because we talked about travel and being out of the country and having those experiences being the things that we really value, we literally slashed our living expenses so that we can continue to stack up so we can have those travel experiences. And so for us, one of the things that we recently decided is that no matter who won for president, we wanted to get out of the country at least a full 12 to 16 weeks for 2021. And we're starting that. We booked a house in the Bahamas for January. We will be gone for three and a half weeks. And we're pretty certain of where we're going in June, April, and then again in June. Like any place where there's a break in my schedule, we've decided that we are going to spend it traveling as a family. And that has allowed us to not be concerned about what people think or not even make assumptions or jump to conclusions about what we think other people think about how we should live or what we should drive or what we should do with our money. And I used to say this for so long, but it's really cemented in me now that if you care about what other people think, I used to say you'll always be broke, but I really believe your spirit will always be broken. Because you'll always be trying to live up to someone else's definition of wealth, success, happiness, or joy. And that breaks our spirit. But if you are defining and refining these ideas for yourself, you will probably, if you're honest, if you take an honest assessment, look around and you may either say, oh, I need to go bigger. I've been playing small because... I didn't want to offend so-and-so. Or you're going to say, you know what? I can live with my parents for another year because what matters to me is doing this thing or that thing, right? You'll, You'll look around and go, this is not really my life. 
This isn't really my life. What do I want for my life? And this comes through a lot of exploration, right? This comes through a lot of allowing yourself to be still, allowing yourself to get quiet, taking out a journal, getting in your favorite chair, put on your favorite loungewear, pajamas, let yourself be completely cozy, take your shoes off so you can make sure you're wiggling your toes, maybe put some fuzzy socks on and just allow yourself to be and get that journal and that pen and just start with what do I really want and allow yourself to write. You might be surprised when you go back and read because I remember I had a mentor who gave me an assignment similar years ago, maybe 12, 13 years ago. And I remember that I was so in my head about that list that I was writing things that I thought sounded good. I was writing the things that I thought people should want by my age or because of my income at that time or like, you know, I put all these parameters parameters on what it should be and what the list should entail. And I found that list years after the fact. And I remember looking at it and it could have been just by virtue of the fact that I had matured and I was just older in general. And again, this is why we do it frequently, right? We want to do it at least once a year because you're going to change. You're going to be shifted. Hopefully you grow, you're expanded, you're exposed to new people, new ideas, new concepts. But I look back at that list and I tell you half those things when I really, really got honest, I was like, did I ever want this stuff? Many of them I had gotten, and I can tell you, I got it and realized I got it because I thought it was a part of the path, like it was a part of the journey. It's a part of if you've achieved certain milestones, this is what your life should look like. And I didn't like it. It's funny how you can get the very thing that you think you want and then actually feel like you're settling in some way. And so I invite you to grab a journal, grab some notebook paper, whatever you got, type it in your phone. I think writing helps more, but if you have to type it in your notes, do that. What do I really want? And then ask yourself, when I look back over my life, What has actually brought me the most joy? What has actually brought me the most joy? Not some joy, not happiness, because as Kirk Franklin says, happiness is based on happenings, right? So not happiness, but pure, unadulterated joy. That when you are on your deathbed, you will look back and have no regrets for having spent time doing that thing with those people in that way. And then ask yourself, how do I scale that? How do I scale it? How do I take this experience that gave me the most joy or this thing, you know, what gives you the most joy might be a great cup of coffee in the morning, you know? So if you have uh, a cabinet with 50 of your favorite coffee mugs, good for you. We're not all able. That would drive me nuts. I only need about four or five mugs at a time, right? But if that's what brings you joy, I don't care if, what's the lady Marie Kondo? I don't care what she says to keep things I believe that you enjoy. But I know a lot of organizers who would say, oh, my gosh, what are you doing? You only need three mugs like you you only need four mugs at most. Right. But if that's the thing that gives you joy, every cabinet in your kitchen could be full with mugs. And whose business is that? 
as long as you go to your kitchen, open those cabinets and smile from ear to ear because you love your collection, that's what matters. That's what matters. So what do you really want? What has brought you the most joy? And what are you going to do to scale that? Meaning how are you going to create more of those moments where you get to smile from ear to ear, where you get to wake up and look around you and feel nothing but pure gratitude that you were able to create something, a space, an experience, a relationship that makes you so thankful and so proud and so grateful that you did it your way, not your mom's way, not your spouse's way, not your friend's way, but your way. I really want to invite us, after all we've experienced this year, to go into 2021, not hoping, wishing, praying, but creating what we say we want for ourselves and setting boundaries for anything that may threaten that as an opportunity. Setting boundaries, even with ourselves. Sometimes the enemy is not without, it's within. It's not on the outside, it's us. Because we set boundaries and then we don't honor them. So for some of you, in order to scale what you're looking for, it might be time to get way more disciplined in your finances. And the enemy is the dollar store. The enemy is shopping on Amazon, doing one click. (laughs) The enemy is, you know, giving money or lending money that you can't afford to give. And those are things that you have to get in order because you have to be more committed to scaling your joy than you are being interested in all these other things, right? You you can't be interested in scaling the joy. You can't be interested in I want to wake up feeling this level of joy and happiness and contentment, right? You have to be committed to it which means you're going to have to make some decisions. And so for us, when we decided, look, we want to travel the world as a family before my daughter even goes to college, right? And we don't need all of this space, not laid out, especially the way our home was laid out in California, not laid out like that. We had to make some some sacrifices. We had to make some decisions, So we moved into an 18, 1900 square foot apartment, right? My husband sold some of his old school cars. And yes, I say some because he had several. used to wear me out. (laughs) That's another story for another day, right? I had to get focused on my business and stop playing around with how I knew I could support people. I had to stop playing around with that. Like I I was so, I won't won't say dependent, but so much of my business did come from just doing brand work and um, speaking. And my life felt so hectic that I would say, well, I don't, I can't really settle down to do a consistent group coaching program or something. But then when I looked at what do I really, really want? I wanted to have the flexibility to move about when we got to this place where we are now, where I could serve people and not have to show up somewhere physically. So that means I started saying no to more speaking gigs so that I could focus my attention on building Purpose to Platform and now command the stage. And those are two programs that I can run virtually from anywhere in the world. I shifted the business model to fit what I say I want. And the problem is many of us say we want things, but then we're not willing to shift and sacrifice what we already have. You have to be willing 
to open your palms, open your hands and surrender. Especially if what you're saying you want and what you're feeling called to and what brings you the most joy is is definitely like you feel it in the pit of your stomach. Like you know that you know. You know that you know. And again, purpose evolves. Things may change. In a couple years, it'll be something different. And that's okay if it is. But today, you know that you know. You got to surrender. You're going to have to surrender what's familiar. You're going to have to surrender what may feel safe. You may have to surrender what feels comfortable. But in the end, it's going to be worth it. Some of the things that I've experienced over the last couple of years, you guys, it has been uncomfortable. I have been stretched. Oh my goodness. My team will tell you, men, some of these, you know, weekly calls, I have to prepare myself. I'm like, well, who's paying who here? Y'all are working me, <laughs> right? But they're making me better. They're making me a better leader, a better woman, a better believer, I'm being stretched. And the thing is, even for the stretch, it's getting me closer to the things that I say I want. And so I want us to look at what do we really value? Because if we don't, we will wake up at some point And realize that we have checked everything off the list. And it was nothing of what we truly wanted deep down. We did all the things that other people thought would be awesome. And we look back at it as just another day, another thing, another house another covering, shelter, whatever, and it meant nothing. When it came down to it, it really meant nothing. So one of the things that I'm going to be doing for those who pre-ordered my new book, Redefine Wealth for Yourself, is I'm hosting on January 6th a masterclass called Results Not Resolutions. Now, if you've been around for a while, you know that Results Not Resolutions is how I kick off every year in terms of a podcast series. So we're gonna have some amazing interviews to really get you refocused and committed, not interested, but committed to what you say you want. But I want you to do the exercises that I gave you, the writing out what you really want, what gives you the most joy, right? And then I want to equip you on that masterclass on January 6th with how you're going to scale it. One of the things that I've been kind of known for for a while, this is well before the podcast, I used to do different calls. This is when people did teleseminars, kind of, not just webinars. And I always would help people either end the year on a great note or start strong, finish strong or start strong, whatever I had time to do at that time. And I never really gave away all the goodies. But one of the things that I would share was that unlike most people, I don't set New Year's resolutions. I don't have a goal for the year because I believe that the time you give yourself is the time it's going to take. So I teach the system that I use to set quarterly goals um, and how that has allowed me year after year after year to hit some years, 12 to 15 really remarkable goals. Um, Meanwhile, most people are still struggling to hit one. And so I want to teach you that if you know what you really want and you come to this results, not resolutions, I guarantee you, You're going to get a system for how to set your life up to hit those things, but while utilizing the pillars, the six pillars of wealth that we teach here at Redefining Wealth. And so if you have not pre-ordered your copy, I really want to encourage you to join us. Go to patricewashington.com forward slash pre-order, patricewashington.com forward slash pre-order, and you will automatically be registered. There's nothing extra you have to do. 
Anyone who purchases through my site will not only get an autographed hardcover copy of the book straight from me, but you will also be automatically registered for that two-hour training. And if you've ever done a training with me, if you've ever done a training with me, you know that we go in, we go hard, and we remove all unnecessary fluff and we get to work. And so I'm excited to help you set up 2021. But I couldn't, I we were already, you know, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people have pre-ordered the book. That, that wasn't the thing. This came to me today in the shower. You know, that's where I get my downloads. This came to me today because I felt this, this sense of, Don't let people invest in coming to Results Not Resolutions, the masterclass, and put all of these amazing strategies and tools and tactics towards the wrong goal. I don't want to help you lean your ladder against the wrong wall. I want you to, if you are climbing, climb up the ladder that's going to get you to your definition of wealth, success, and joy. That's what I want for you. I don't want to help you hit a goal that looks good to others, but does nothing for your soul. That's not what I'm here for. That's not my role in your journey. That's not my role in your life. And one of my biggest prayers is that everyone who interacts with me as a student, as a podcast listener, as a social media, you know, friend, follower, as someone in the audience when I'm speaking, I feel like my part in your life is to truly shift and help transform you to truly pursue your God-given purpose and only do things that are in alignment with who you are and what you've been called to do. And so this training is no different. My book is no different. And I'm excited about what we're going to create together on January 6th. So again, you can pre-order your hardcover autographed copy at patricewashington.com forward slash pre-order. And I am so excited to do my part to help you scale your joy because that's what we need more of in this world, but definitely after a year like this. So I hope that's a blessing to you. Feel free to share your thoughts with me about this episode in our free Redefining Wealth community on Facebook. You can get there by going to IamAPurposeChaser.com. And yeah, share with me in social media. If you are new here, please subscribe. You will not be disappointed. I say subscribe, but then go back. We have a back catalog that is extraordinary, extraordinary. I'm very proud of the work that we've done here on this podcast. So use us as uh, your binge worthy content this upcoming weekend. I'm in social media at Seek Wisdom PCW. That's Seek Wisdom PCW. And I can't wait to hear your thoughts on this episode. Until next time, I want you to go live your life's purpose, find fulfillment, and earn more without ever chasing money. Talk to you later.